Hi, so in this video we're going to talk about a comparison of operating margins using examples of a couple of companies that are listed in the Indian markets namely Airtel and DMART, right? Before we go any further just a point around operating margins when we say operating margins we are talking about EBITDA margins for the company earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization, right? So before proceeding ahead there's a question that we start with which of these three companies, Airtel, DMART and Maruti Suzuki, which of these do you think has the highest operating margin or highest EBITDA margin? Just think about it, write your answer in the comment section, which of these three do you think has the highest EBITDA margins, right? Now we posed this question through a poll on some of our social media platforms and we got certain responses and you know, most of the people chose DMART as the answer. Nearly 60% of the people said DMART is the, is the company with the highest EBITDA margin on average, followed by Maruti and Airtel, almost equivalent sort of uh, points there, right? Uh, the numbers don't add up to 100, they add up to 101 because of uh, slight rounding error, I think, right? So, but we get the drift that, you know, bulk of the respondents believe that DMART has the highest EBITDA margin. Now before we go any further, let's actually figure out how do you reach to that EBITDA margin number. So what is this operating profit? Operating profit for any business is the context of revenues minus any kind of operating costs. Now what are revenues? Revenues are the sales figures. Whatever we are doing in business, the money we derive out of that activity is our revenue. So for Airtel it is mobile, telephony and internet. For Maruti it is selling cars. For DMART it is running the retail stores essentially. Operating costs are the costs that are undertaken in trying to get this revenue, right? Trying to basically sell the product or service you're trying to do. And so this will include stuff like, uh, you know, salaries. This will, for a manufacturing firm, include raw material costs. This would include administrative costs, electricity, rent, advertising, all selling general administrative costs will come and become a part of operating costs, right? Commonly, the term operating profit also refers to this term called EBITDA, which is earnings before interest, uh, you know, taxes, depreciation and amortization, correct? Now, from here, we remove these three line items. One is depreciation and amortization, as the case may be, then interest and taxes. Once we remove this, we get to the final net profit figure, right? What is operating profit margin? That's nothing but my EBITDA divided by sales. For our discussion today, we're going to use this definition of operating profit margin. Basically, what is the percentage of EBITDA you generate per 100 rupees of sales is what is being derived by the concept of operating margin, right? Now we go back to our question. Which of the firms do we think would have the highest operating margin? To understand that, we'll probably have to decode what their business model is. We also have screenshots from screener.com, no, no, no screener.in. We also have screenshots from Screener to kind of get their financial statements. Uh, so let's start with Airtel, right? Let's look at the latest year where data is available. 1 lakh crore of sales, 55,000 crore of expenses. That gives an operating profit of 45,000 crore. An operating profit margin, which is my EBITDA margin basically of 45%. In fact, if you look at that row, you will find that the operating profit margin has always been in the range of 30 to 40%, last year being one of the best years for them. The trouble for Airtel starts after that, right? So you see a big interest component, you see a big depreciation component. Why is that? That's because Airtel is in a super capital intensive business. Why is it capital intensive? Because you have to pay for spectrum, you have to put all the infrastructure, you have to create the network before you start offering your services. To do this capex, you have to borrow money. So huge capital expenditure, huge borrowing results in high depreciation, high interest. So by the time the operating profit reaches to the net profit, in some of the years they are actually making losses, otherwise they're making small profits. So the profit margin, net profit margin goes down significantly. So they are in a business which makes a lot of money on an operational basis, but then ends up sort of removing a lot of it in terms of you know, the accounting for depreciation and interest components that come beyond that. DMART, on the other hand, if you see, has about approximately 24,000 crore of sales, even if you leave 21 as the pandemic year, 
uh, 20, 20, 24,000 crore sales, 22,000 crore of uh, expenses, operating profit or EBITDA of about 2,000 crore. If you look at operating profit margins, that will be between 6 to 9%, the best year being 9%. Now think about what's DMART's business model, right? DMART is a retail company. A retail company basically purchases some products and sells it, right? It is purchasing some stock from some other entity and selling their product on their own stores, right? So it's it's a it's a business where you have some cost and you put a markup on that and you sell it and it's a competitive business because you'll be selling somebody else's product you can't significantly you know uh, up the price from what the cost is because someone else will sell it at a lower price point so in a competitive industry their margins will be low their operating margins are actually at about 6 to 7 to 9% in most of the cases but because retail is not as capital intensive a business, there's no requirement for debt, so very little interest cost. In the case of DMART, they actually own their stores, otherwise most other retail guys actually just, you know, sort of rent out the stores as well. So here there is still some depreciation amount that's coming on account of the stores, but for all practical purposes, that's not very large. In fact, DMART requires, you know, about 40 odd crore approximately to put up one store. And you know, when you have profits of about 15 to 1700 crore, you can basically put up about, uh, you know, 30 to 40 stores in a year, just by sheer profits themselves. So it's not a very capital intensive business. And because it's not a capital intensive business does not have interest does not have a lot of depreciation that comes. But operating margins are much thinner or lower as compared to Airtel. Airtel apne business mein zyada operating margin bana pata hai. Par uske baad depreciation or interest mein bahut sara uh, you know, expense ho jata hai. But DMART apne business mein come operating margin banata hai and yet they remain profitable at the end of it, right? Take a quick look at Maruti as well. Maruti, as you know, manufactures cars. The biggest cost for car manufacturing will be raw material cost, right? Which comes here. And you'll again see that operating margins for Maruti would be in the range of somewhere between, you know, 8 to 12, 14% for most of the years, 15% for most of the years, right? Uh, Again, not a business that is very capital intensive. It is capital intensive, more capital intensive as compared to retail, but not as high uh, as compared to, let's say, a telecom business. So they don't need too much debt. It's a cash rich company, um, generates a lot of cash flow each year. Depreciation is higher as compared to, let's say, something like a DMART but not as high as what a telecom company would be. I mean, if you look at the sales numbers, 2020 sales for Maruti was about 75,000 crore, for Airtel was about 85,000 crore. And you compare the depreciation figures here, there's like 27,000 crore and here you have like 3,000 crore. So you get the sense of size and scale, right? So within these three companies, Airtel happens to have the highest operating margins, yet by the time it reaches net profit, they sort of end up losing most of it in terms of interest cost or depreciation costs, at least as of now, right? If you look at, take a closer look at what those expenses are, the biggest expense for Airtel, which is on the top, this is from their annual report, uh, is network operating expense, right? Access charges when uh, the call connects from one network to the other, right? License fee, spectrum charges and employee expenses. For DMART, on the other hand, the biggest expense is purchase of stock in trade. What is this? You're buying some companies, FMCG companies product probably, and then putting it on your store shelf, which is getting sold. So that's in a way a raw material cost for someone like a DMART, right? So that's the construct of how do you look at this? To summarize, when we get a question like, you know, which company has the highest operating margin or EBITDA margin, what's important for us is to consider what is the business model? How does the company make money? And where does the company really lose money, right? I suspect that a lot of people chose DMART here because DMART is profitable on a net basis and Airtel is loss making in most of the years on a net basis. But we have to understand and remember that there is a difference in the way these businesses operate. One is significantly more capital intensive than the other. And so consequently, that makes us believe that probably DMART is profitable, more profitable on an operating level as well as compared to the other firms. Whereas in reality, on average, the operating profit margin of DMART would be the least in the three companies that have been discussed, right? That's broadly it in this particular video. Thank you.